Hello, good afternoon. It is the 7th of March and I am just doing another recap for my my Lent this year, 2022, and I'm reading the book trilogy after. Now, I already mentioned I've been highlighting certain areas in the book with post-its. I've also done some at the bottom. And now I'm currently on chapter said it right this time, not page, 63. So I have actually read a lot more of the book than what I had previously to when I last blogged yesterday. Now, just a quick recap. The book is nothing like the movie at all. The movie, I believe, has been set to be a PG rating. The book is more tailored, in my opinion, for someone who's 16, 15 to 16 upwards. Sorry, I'm so tired. I try so hard not to yawn on any of my videos, but I just feel like I'm always tired uh, from being as old as I am now, I guess. I don't know what it is. And basically, in the book, I was stating how the relationship between Tess and Harden it's a very toxic relationship. But all of the other characters in the book as well don't exactly help that situation. Sorry. If anything, they make it worse. Now, in the movie, you don't actually get to meet Harden's dad and Landon's m mother until their wedding day. That still hasn't actually taken place in the book yet. Tess has already met both of Harden's dad Ken and Karen London's mum. Now she's actually been getting on very well with Karen like a house on fire. Karen's offered to help her learn how to bake, they've offered to do gardening together. She's even been to the house when Harden's not around because she's friends with Landon. Oh, I'm so sorry that I keep yawning I can only apologise. And um Again, these are things and dynamics you don't actually see in the movie. They're only in the book. The other thing that was actually quite sweet in the book, in a way, was that Harden actually confessed to Tess. He told a little bit about his background, a bit about his life before he came to live with his dad. But then all of a sudden, the following day, it was like someone had flicked a switch and he was back to being this quite abusive individual as well with the game Truth or Dare, it seems to appear to be Pardon me. a game that they play on a weekly basis. So although in the book she has obviously participated in two Truth or Dare events, they still haven't even got to the bonfire yet and she has officially broken up with her boyfriend Noah. Whereas in the movie, they don't break up until after the bonfire. So in the movie, obviously, a few key elements have been swapped around. <sighs> so sorry. And again, um, she has now gone on a date with Zeb, who is one of Harden's closest friends. And everybody knows that they've been on this date together. We don't know what's been said. We don't really know what took place other than her version. And even Harden has said to her, look, you know, anything that happens in my group of friends, everyone's going to know about it. So kind of like watch yourself. As everybody knows everybody's business. Molly, she's a little bit of a catalyst. She's still in there somewhere flirting with Harden every single chat she gets. But again, Landon hasn't helped the situation because he was the one actually telling Tess, go to this party. I won't go because I don't get on with these people. But you go, you go and find out what's going on with Harden. When she goes to one of the parties at the frat house, Molly's all over him, which is why she ends up going out with Zeb. So there is a lot of changes, like I said, from the book to the first movie. I understand this happens with the other movies that have been made. 
as well that I haven't seen. So, like I said, no one is innocent in this book. But the one thing I do want to quickly mention is one of the pages actually got a purple. <sighs> oh, I can only apologise. You know, if you wanted to record somebody yawning and enjoyed watching that, then I think this is the video for you. Um, because Harden actually confesses to Tess that he's been stalking her. I'm not crying, it's just because I've been yawning so much. Um, and he already knew things like her daily routine and how she met London at this particular coffee shop on a daily basis. So if that isn't a cause for concern to not have a relationship with somebody that... They have obviously admitted that they know your routine. They've deleted messages out of your phone when you've spent time with them. They're throwing high heel shoes at you. They're constantly, like, belittling you in front of people, shouting at you. And their moods are so erratic. Honor me. And I don't know what other way to sort of say to somebody, you shouldn't be in this relationship with this person. I mean, twice she has spent a night with him where he's had nightmares. Again, no one knows why he's having those. So, yes, he does need counselling. He needs therapy, and I'm going to say that that is the case. But surely she needs it as well, because she has allowed herself to be sort of trapped in this perpetual cycle where she wants to be with him, but she doesn't feel she should be with him. But yet she's with him anyway, and now she's not. So at this moment in time, Hardin and Tess are not together. She has chosen to try and find more friends at college. She's also got her internship, I completely forgot about that, Advanced Publishing. And again, why is this not a cause for concern when... When you get a knock on the door to go to the Chancellor's office, who is Ken, who's Harden's dad? Again, we don't find out from Harden or even Lance that he's the father of Harden and that the ha Harden's father is the Chancellor of the university, well, the college that she's attending. And he says to her straight away, I've got an interview at Vance Publishing, but don't think for any circumstances that if you refuse to do what I'm going to ask you to do, that this is going to affect your internship, if you get it. Well, why would somebody make such a statement like that and then make you want to not think that the terms of you getting this internship don't come with some kind of, like, clauses that you may or may not agree with? And basically, Ken is trying to get Tessa to persuade Harden to attend his wedding. So again, all this is going on before Harden and Tess are even officially, I suppose, what they may or may not class as dating. So she's been to the internship, she's got a car of her own to sort of sever ties and be too needy, I guess, and not needing anyone else's support. She's um, spoken to Vance Publishings. They're happy with her. They've offered her the job. It's a paid job as well. It's a paid internship. I mean, things like that are like gold dust to anybody. And she's done it without Harden's help, which has made him extremely jealous because she, he, he was like, I don't want my dad to help you. I want to help you. Pardon me. But her, his dad has stepped in and given her this sort of olive branch Whereas in the movie, she does it all on her own. And you do not know in the film whether or not she's been accepted. Only that she has an interview. So again, that's not included in the movie. And for somebody to say that to you, I'm going to get you this job practically, but please, I want my son to come for my wedding. Can you help me sort that out? It just kind of puts you in that sort of very weird situation 
But in the same time, I suppose Harden's attitude is, I don't want you to get too friendly with my family. Otherwise, you'd be like this really annoying girlfriend that I want to break up with, but I can't because my family love you. And I've known relationships like that where, you know, people have got too close to their friends or the person they're dating or too close to the family. And then when it's time to sort of chuck them because you don't want to be with them anymore, it's really hard to do. Because you, you know you're running then the risk of upsetting everybody else. So it's a little bit too much too soon, her sort of being so close with everybody else when her and Harden, it's still this perpetual roundabout of just not moving forward. They're just standing still, basically. They're stagnant. And the other thing as well is he always would grab her by the wrist. And the only time in the book so far that hasn't happened is when he went for dinner at his father's house. He actually held her hand. Even though it was short-lived. The only other... The only movie, really, that I've ever seen that happen in was a movie called Gossip, um, which had Joshua Jackson in and a few other quite renowned actors and actresses who have just have drawn a blank. And again, in that movie, although she, he was dating his girlfriend, he would hold her by the wrist. He would never hold her by the hand. So again, that seems to be the, the case with Harden. That the only time he's ever sort of paid true public affection was one in front of the coffee shop where he confesses his love to Tessa and it's the first time he actually says he loves her in front of his friends, in front of everybody even though she doesn't believe him and when he was at the house with his parents so I have got probably about 200 pages of this book left to finish I will try and get that done by tomorrow if possible if not Wednesday. So fingers crossed, we'll see what else um, pops out of the book with regards to how it differentiates between the movie. So thank you once again for watching and enjoy the rest of your evening.